welcome to episode 71, I think, of the Corner of Craft podcast. I hope you're all well and that you've had a lovely three weeks since I last saw some of you, if you don't watch my vlogs, if you're just a podcast viewer, that is more than fine. Um, this episode of the Corner of Crafts podcast is sponsored by the wonderful Skillshare, but I'll talk a bit more about them in a little bit. If you are new to the channel, hello, I hope you're all well. I haven't got my engagement ring on. I've got my wedding ring on, but I forgot to put earrings in. Oh, what a mess. Um, it snowed this morning. It's all very exciting. Uh, my name is Hannah. I am coming at you today from Nottingham here in the UK, England specifically. Um, if you'd like to follow me on social media, please feel free. Links, as always, can be found in the description box below, along with any other information that I think is pertinent to you. And this is a knitting and sometimes crochet but not today podcast in which I talk about the projects that I'm working on and things like that. I am a small business owner and I own the business The Corner of Craft. One would guess, clues in the name. Um, and yeah, I make hand beaded stitch markers and I dye yarn under the name Chromatic Yarns. And all of the yarn that I dye is Dungeons and Dragons theme. So that's very exciting. I'm trying to work out what looks weird about my face today. I'm not used to wearing collared shirts. Could be that. Could also be I don't have eyeliner on. And it's the first time I've worn a dress in a really long time. I don't know. I'm feeling a bit off in my appearance today and I can't work out what it is. But, um... I'm just going to talk to you about our sponsor today, Skillshare. Skillshare is a online learning community for those of us who are creatively minded with thousands of classes available. Whether you just want to improve on the skills that you already have or learn something completely new, I'm sure you're going to find something for you because there are classes in a range of difficulties and you can filter by difficulty so you don't have to spend time on a class that already covers things that you know. Whether you want to learn how to market your business, how to be better at writing, how to draw, how to sew, there's classes for you. I put a poll up on YouTube the other day and asked what your favourite yarn craft was and a lot of people said they want to try weaving. Well, there are over 300 classes come up when you search for weaving on Skillshare. Some of them are without a loom as well. You can make nice little necklaces or wall hangings. It's super cute. I now really want to give it a try. But as someone who runs an online business, search engine optimization is important. So I have been taking the introduction to SEO by Ran Fis Fis Fishkin. Ran Fishkin. Yep. Um, and I've been finding that very helpful and very useful because SEO was just a mystery to me before that. Um, yeah. But now, I feel like I'm learning something. In classes there are projects and assignments set and you can do the assignments and submit the work and get feedback on the work that you've done, which I love. I thrive off feedback, so I love that aspect of it. And I also love that you can ask questions and get responses either from other people doing the same course or from the course leader themselves. Super useful. It's good to have that, you know, question answer situ. They're always bringing new classes to the platform which is great, you're never going to get bored. And for less than $10 a month, which is around £7.50-ish, I think, I don't know, exchange rate has changed. Um, if you go for the yearly subscription, I think that's quite the bargain. Skillshare are offering the first 1,000 of you to click the link in the description box or in the top pinned comment a free trial to their premium membership so you can try it out and see if you like it, see if it's your kind of thing. And that's super cool, you can do so much learning. So be sure to click the link in the description box to claim your spot. Let's all learn something new. Yes, we can do it. Feel free to tag me in your pictures on Instagram if you are taking a Skillshare class because I'm super nosy and hey, maybe I wanna try the class too. So please feel free to tag me, that'd be great. Uh, many thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and back to the podcast. The tea I am drinking today is in my new mug. It arrived today and I'm so excited about it. Uh, the tea I'm drinking is Bird and Blend Chocolate Digestives and my new mug is from The Silver Spot. I don't know if I can do, yes. Beep, 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 beep. I've wanted one of Emma's mugs for the longest time. 
but her shop updates sell out. So when, just before Christmas, she said that she was opening up some custom spots, I was like, well, Emma, yes please. Um, if you recognise her business name at all, her and I did a collaborative um, Instagram giveaway about a year ago. Yeah. Uh, she actually helped me reach 10k followers on Instagram, so thank you very much, Emma. Um, and the giveaway was for a mug and a y y yarn that I dyed inspired by the mug, which I've sold, so I can't show you it. Um, but that is what my Xanatha colourway was inspired by. One of our galaxy mugs. And so when I got the chance... I went for the mushroom mug, which, I won't lie, surprised me slightly. Because I definitely thought I would have gone for like a galaxy mug, but I can't resist these mushroom mugs with a big red drip. I love it. Ah, wonderful. I'll be sure to pop a link to Emma's website and Instagram in the podcast notes, which are all up on my website so click the link either in the top pinned comment or in the description box below for more information about any of the knitting projects that I will be talking about but yes um it's a beautiful mug thank you Emma I'm still miffed that I didn't get one of her snowflake mugs but I thought I can use the mushroom mug year round snowflake mug is a bit more wintry and festive uh, although mushroom mugs technically also I just wanted a mushroom mug. Hey, who's to say I won't get another one of her mugs? It's massive. This is the medium size. Just like to say, this is the medium size. This is my hand. This is the medium size. I can't show you the circumference. I can fit my fist in it. Let's not think about that too much. So, um, today's podcast has a couple of proper finished objects, not almost finished objects, and a few whips and maybe one going to the frog pond. I haven't said that out loud, so it might not happen, but like the idea is there. Um, yeah, we've had snow and now it's really sunny and I feel like it's throwing off the lighting of this because I need to set up my grid wall and sit over there for my podcast. I can't sit here. I need to stop thinking I can. It's not gonna happen. So my first finished object, I'm wearing it. Behold the cable. Ba -la 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 -la, da -da -da -da. And the sparkly buttons. We went for obnoxious, excuse me. The obnoxious sparkly buttons. Um, this is my telegram cardigan designed by the amazing and beautiful and my best friend Becky Sorensen. Um, Soprano Knits on Instagram or Becky Sorensen on the YouTubes. And yeah, I cast this on I think last year. It was going to be my Rhinebeck jumper cardigan didn't go to Rhinebeck. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed knitting it. Um, it is knit out of my hand dyed yarn on a non superwash base. It's a little itchy. I don't know if I need to try and find like, or try and block it again or use some, block it for longer. I don't know, but it's a little itchy. I always used to block using like um, hair conditioner, but like not just cheap hair conditioners, like good stuff that didn't have silicones and stuff in it. So I don't know whether to try to go back to that and see if that softens it. Or, suck it up buttercup. Because uh, it's not impossible, it's just a little, a little itchy. Could also be because I'm getting a bit warm with the sun. Anyway, uh, yes, in my moonbeam colourway. And it's very pretty. I like it. It's a, it's a size inclusive pattern, which we love. Um, I harped on about this in one of my vlogs last week, but I love knitting Becky's patterns. I'm even wearing socks she's knit, the Volker socks. I don't know if I can show you without flashing because I'm in tights. I'm not that flexible anymore. Um, maybe. <laughs> the Volker socks. Oh God, I almost fell off my chair. Um, I just love how Becky's patterns are written. I think they're really well written, they're really thorough. She includes tutorials on anything that you think might be difficult. She, as in video tutorials, they're fully size inclusive and she makes sure they fit the same on each size. So you're not gonna get gaping neck holes or weird, weird bits where the sleeves come out or you know, you know, some, some patterns, some pat, you can't, 
thin people and fat people are not the same proportionally just bigger so you can't just take this pattern and like make it bigger because that's not how it works she also includes all of the measurements for each separate part so if uh, so you can completely customize it to your own size so if you're a size if you're like size bracket two for your body but your size bracket three for your arms or whatever you can like pick and choose you might have to just add some more stitches in or blah 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 I think that's really good because you can actually get a customized fit but yes the sparkly buttons are from Juicy Bee on Etsy and they are vintage sparkly buttons and I love them and I have more to go on a future knit oh, I love the sparkly buttons I will stop going on about them now the next thing that I have knit are for the lockdown sock down cow. If you'd like to join the cow, you're still more than welcome to. We are still in lockdown. I don't know when it's ending. Um, we're having a review on the 22nd of February, but that doesn't mean it's going to end then. I don't know. So we're keeping it going, which is good. Um, the lockdown sock down, if you want more information, please feel free to visit my blog, The Chatter of Craft. It's on my website. Um, and I have all information on there if you want to join the lockdown sock down. It's kind of like the hoedown throwdown, but more knitting and more socks and less hoeing down. So, as in gardening. Um, so, these socks are actually knit for one of my friends. She doesn't know that she's getting them. It was her birthday last month, so they're late. <laughs> So uh, these are knit out of beehive yarns in her colourway that she came out for the Tits Out Collective. And I did a 60 stitches on a 2.5mm needle and a 2x1 rib. 1x1 uh, one one rib at the top, 2x1 rib. I did a new depths heel but I only increased by 2 stitches. And then a standard square toe. The New Depths heel is also patterned by Becky Sorensen. You're going to hear me say her name at least one more time in this episode. So I'm very sorry. Also, Becky, if your ears were burning on Monday, now you know why. Um, but yes, the contrast is uh, Chromatic Yarns, my own hand-dyed yarn, in the, the DM's Wife colourway, uh, which is my bridesmaid's dresses colours uh, or colour. And I thought it went very well. It's on my merino sock base, which is 85% support merino, 15% nylon. And yes, I finished these this morning whilst I was editing the vlog, Monday's vlog, because I'm filming this on Monday. Um, yeah, I can't remember what sock I finished last. So we'll say this one for the sake of argument. Yesterday afternoon, just before we started playing D&D &D at like 2pm, I was here. And then we played D&D &D and had like a three hour fight. Um, it was very intense, we had to fight an elder brain. I'd saved up all of my spells to fight this elder brain and then by the time I got there I was an earth elemental and couldn't use any of my spells anyway. Druids ma'am, druids, can't wait till I'm level 18. Anyway, so um, I knit a bit more of the leg, I knit the, the heel, and I knit all of the foot up to the toe yesterday, and then this morning I finished off the toe while editing. Um, yeah, so I hope she likes them, and now I've shown them off, I can take a quick picture of them for Instagram, and then I can send them to her as a, I'm very sorry, it's so late, hope you had a great 30th birthday, have some socks. Um, they're a bit shorter than socks I usually knit, but yeah. I think they're cute nonetheless and now I can cake up yarn for my next socks which are going to be for Mario's birthday present um I will grab the yarn very quickly one second so the yarn that I'm going to use for Mario's socks is Moloch on my merino base that I just spoke about merino sock it's just red and it's got some brown and yellow speckles on it and this one apparently has a neon purple speckle on it too. Uh, that worked out well, glad I didn't send that one out now. And yeah, so I'm just gonna cake that up um, probably after the podcast and have it ready to cast on um, for when he's not around. Very exciting. 
Um, I hope you're all getting on well with the lockdown sock down, Cal. Speaking of, today through my post box, not really, the postman knocked on the door and handed them to me, um, I received a prize for the Cal, the lovely Jen of Castle View Yarns. This is her California Dreaming colorway on a 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, um, four ply yarn, uh, 425 meters per 100 grams. And yeah, so Castle View Yarns. It's really pretty, perfect springtime colorway. Oh, it's so nice. I'm a bit sad that I don't have one. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm happy to give this away. So we have a cow, we have a prize for the cow. So now I just need to work out how to pick a winner. Google Doc, I think it's gonna have to be a Google Doc. Jen also sent some mini skeins for the Granny Squirk blanket. Um, yeah, she sent these to me to go in my granny square blanket. This is one of my hairs. Um, so that's very exciting. Once again, all information is going to be going in the, um, podcast notes. So, yes, if you just want to buy the skein and support her, I'll put a shop in the podcast notes. Sweet beans. Okay, let's talk about potential frogging things. This is living in my busy bees bag. Boop, boop, boop. D and D themed, of course. Um, my Le Meille. Someone told me how to pronounce it, and I can't remember what they said. Meille. I have a degree in French. I should be able to pronounce this. Meille. Uh, Squishy Shawl by uh, Mina Phillip. I don't know if I want to rip it out and either start again or knit something else with it. This is out of Claire Nettle Ship yarn in Unicorn Kisses and Charcoal and they're so pretty together. They're destined to be together but I will tell you my qualms. So, in the pattern you have to do a decrease every four rows because brioche it's like well not four rows four repeats I can't remember. anyway i know what i mean and for the first ages i was just doing every three and i don't know if it's affected the shape of it or what and i'm just tempted to rip it out start again and make sure it's right for the pattern because i don't want to spend all this time on a shawl and then get further through it and just be like mm. so i might rip it out and start again do something else I can't decide yet I don't know but it's just a bit mm, you know it's nice it's a really it's gonna be really pretty but I uh, well I've made a mistake in it and now I don't really want to knit it anymore <laughs> so I might as well frog it take the needles back and either have it sit till it's you know realized what it's done or something else um which is a shame because it is really pretty but i don't know i think it needs to go in time out for a little bit and think about its life choices um even though it's me that has made the mistake we'll blame the knitting because that makes me feel better so yeah that's this might be going to the frog pond we'll leave it there for now my final whip. This is the last, this is honestly the last thing I have. I feel like it's gonna be quite a short podcast episode. My final whip is living in my The Little Blue Robin project bag. If you've watched this podcast before, then you will know that this project bag was made by my sister, my beautiful, wonderful sister. And um, last time, we hadn't settled on a business name and it hadn't been finalised, but I'm putting it out there, the little blue robin. She's loved robins for ages, so. Um, 
inspired by my druidic Dungeons and Dragons character with green druidic magic, beautiful sparkly gold thread along the top. I love it. Uh, but you might be able to see my fluff nugget cardigan. Becky put a post up on Instagram and said she didn't know what to call her latest cardigan pattern that she's having testing it right now. And she says she's been referring to it as the fluff nugget and a load of people were like, yes, we want that. But we've decided, but she's decided, I say we like I have any involvement in this. She has decided to call it the Berlin cardigan um, named after like the, the filtration system in um wales which is cool not the country the animal uh because she the yarn that she used is like the same color which is super cool but i'm still calling it my fluff nugget cardigan because this is the fluffiest of nuggets it's so fluffy. right i'm at a bit of a chaotic stage of the test knit i'm test knitting this for becky Sorensen. Uh, i am knitting this out of three strands of mohair held together um this is one of my colorways i believe it's called potion of heroism uh, but i've not actually dyed it to sell before but yeah i'm at a bit of a chaotic place to sh show you it but i will try to make it work so um this has taken over all of my knitting time um along with stardew valley has also taken over my knitting time right let's get my life sorted out uh, because this is a test knit and I actually want to have this done and to wear it. Um, so, let me paint you a picture. This is a completely brioche cardigan. Um, I have knit the back, like the bottom portion, knit it from the bottom up. Oh gosh, I won't hold that there. This is the sleeve hole. Um, I've completely finished the right front. Um, and I've done the appropriate short rows. Short rows in brioche. I put off doing it. I would have the whole body finished, but I put off doing short rows in brioche. And I have almost finished the back panel, uh, but there was a bit of a hiccup on the pattern, which is what you expect from a test knit. Um, and so I just wanted to clarify something. Tell you what, I love doing a test knit because I'm a bit of a stickler for detail and because I'm not the most confident in knitting uh, like garments and things with shape. Um, especially in new techniques, um, yeah, I look very closely at the pattern and yeah, I, I spotted an error, which was actually quite a substantial one and I felt like a detective and I love it. Um, but at the same time I was intuitively filling it in anyway, which is what other people have been doing as well. Um, but I'm glad I spotted it. So this is the back. Boop, boop, boop. And I'm in the midst of doing the short rows on there. Um, and then I need, then eventually these, I believe, will be bound off together. I need to do the left side. Um, all my, all these stitches are on hold. I shared in Monday's vlog that I thought I had like the genius plan or genius idea. It probably isn't. But um, because I'm using three strands of mo mohair held together, um, it's kind of, I didn't want to put the stitches on to waste yarn because I usually use crochet cotton because it's smooth and doesn't catch on anything and I've got some quite thick crochet, well I say quite thick, it's not like the super thin stuff and that's what I use generally. But I started to put the neat the stitches onto the crochet cotton. I was like, I'm never going to be able to pick these up again, <laughs> especially in brioche. So I used the cables of my interchangeable cable needles and have just put a different size needle on the end so the stitches don't just slide off. Um, and then I can just like switch out the needles to the smaller ones and knit off them as and when I need to. And I thought that was really clever. I'm a little concerned I'm going to run out of cables because <laughs> I've only got four. Um, and I've got three in use at the minute. And I have to put some on hold, but I might, it might work out. It might be okay. I think I might just have enough. Um, sorry, I've got like fluff up my nose. So this yarn base is um, my uh, mohair and silk base. This was my first attempt at dyeing it. Um, and it's really nice. I think next time I just need to use a little less citric acid. Um, 
I don't know where the rest of it is. It's around somewhere. That's an Ikea bag that I can see there. Uh, yeah. This is like Ikea blue. Um, maybe a little less of Chicasso. But really pretty and have loads more that I can dye up at some point. So, yeah. I've had a lot of people re calling out for the prayer of healing colourway. So maybe I'll do some on... Uh, yeah, so I've got a little panda, one of my stitch markers there, and I've got a sloth back here, and I've got a dragon just here, oh gosh, all of them, and I was uh, super impressed, so much mohair up my nose, oh, I also have a chick somewhere here, they'll be coming to the shop soon, uh, I was super impressed because these, um, findings that I use fit over the top of the six millimeter needles that I'm using so that's super cool um yeah I didn't think it would but it did so that's a definite treat uh there's one bit really frustrating me pretty low down where I've dropped a strand of my mohair but I picked it up on the next one I can't find where it is but it's on the inside thank goodness but I spotted it and then I was like oh no but now I can't find it. So that's a good thing, I suppose. Here. You're not going to be able to see this, are you? Not in the slightest. Here. I don't know. I've tried. So yeah, this is my fluff nugget cardigan. I'm inhaling all the fluff. And it's so lightweight. And it's going to be so toasty warm. I love it and some people have already finished theirs. Sometimes I see test knit as a bit of a race where I want to beat other people. Um, not physically as in like win, but it's not a race. Slow and steady wins the race as long as I'm done in the next few weeks, then I will be very happy. I got buttons, I got buttons. Hey Becky, I got buttons buttons um also from juicy Ju juicy b j-u-s-i-b-e-e -E on etsy um same as same place as i got these we've got sparkly buttons i don't know if they're going to be big enough uh the pattern call for 27 millimeter buttons and these are 25 millimeter buttons but they're silver and they're sparkly and i just think they're gonna be super cute you know you need a few of them. It's not like buttoned all the way up like this one. Um, but yeah, so I'm keeping them inside one of the pockets, one of the many pockets in my project bag. Uh, yeah, I've got this much left of the first three balls and then I've got my next three balls waiting to go. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm really enjoying learning new techniques and brioche in one color is like dead easy. Um, I didn't think it would be. I don't know why I thought it wouldn't be, but I don't know. I don't know. I'd never done brioche in one colour before, but you don't have to do the purling one, so... It's pretty great. It's pretty great. So, that is everything I'm currently working on. Um, I'm currently making the Stitch Marker Club. Hopefully by the time you're seeing this, they will all be done. And I'm planning on dyeing up the Yarn Club tomorrow inspired by Essex um, from Critical Role, the Critical Role Yarn Club. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, thank you to everyone who has been watching my vlogs. Uh, very much appreciate it. And I am also starting to plan out advents. I know it's only February, but I need to work out pricing. I need to work out if I want any extras in it. I need to contact people if I do want extras in it about whether they will do the extras for me slash how much the extras will be and all of that fun stuff. So, um, next shop update is the 27th of February, 2021 at 10 a.m. GMT. It's a bit of an earlier one for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere uh, who have been missing out on shop updates because I've been doing them at 4pm, which is a bit selfish of me, apologies. Uh, so if there's anything in particular that you would like to see in the shop, either message me on Instagram or leave it in the comments down below, the latter is probably better. Um, and I will make a list 
I will check it twice. Trying to find out who's naughty or nice. Um, it's because I've said the word Advent. Now all the Christmas songs are happening. But Mario's been playing Destiny 2 and a section of the music sounds a bit like um, a bit of the instrumental of in Muppets Christmas Carol. Do 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 do. Uh, and so every time he's been playing it, I then get that song in my head. Um, and because it's not actually the song, the song just keeps going. <sighs> because I don't get the satisfaction of the song ending. Frustrating. Anyway. I'll be putting a post up on Instagram if I haven't already done it. Ooh, a pigeon. Uh, I need to stop doing I stop leaning back. Oh, but that also makes sense as to... Oh, Starling, what are you doing up there? Makes sense as to why when I'm sat in the living room and the fireplace which has been converted to a gas fire but still has a chimney, I think. Um, like, I could hear pigeons down it the other day. It makes sense. Anyway, I'll put a post up on Instagram asking for what people want to see in the shop, be it stitch markers or yarn or both. And I will try and get more yarn in the shop this time and stop slacking with dyeing it. I'm very good at putting stuff off. It's not good. Anyway. So. That's everything. I've not done anything. We're still in lockdown. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> I can't do anything. That's it. That's all. WandaVision. We're watching WandaVision. It's really good. I very much recommend it if you're into the MCU kind of stuff. Um, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe. We would love to have you join the party that is the Corner of Craft. Um, I'm currently uploading three times a week, which is pretty great. I'm quite proud that I've stuck at it so far. Um, a lot of studio vlogs, which is just me vlogging my day to day, uh, chatting to you all as though you are my co-workers, but in like a really loving, kind, caring way, as opposed to a co-worker that gets on my nerves. You're like the co-worker that we're friends with that co-worker um if you'd like to follow me on social media please feel free links as always can be found in the description box below along with the link to get your spot on the free trial of skillshare and uh podcast notes there that's down there too there's also the burn to blend discount code um if you want to grab yourself some tea the pancake tea is out at the moment uh, by the time you're watching this, I've probably received it, but in the post is my coming my um, strawberry Nutella pancake tea, as well as some more blueberry pancake. They used to just do it on Shrove Tuesday, but I'm glad that it's a bit earlier because it used to be a mad dash and it was very stressful. But that's down there too. Um, along with social media, but I think that's what I said. Leave me a comment down below, let me know what you've been up to, what have you been working on? Um, have you finished any projects that you've told me about? I'm invested now. What have you been doing in your life? I know some of you lucky people aren't in lockdown anymore and have very few cases of coronavirus, so colour me jealous. Um, it's so weird how every country is like different. It's baffling, like how a nightclub's open. <laughs> anyway, sorry, that was a, an aside. Um, but yes, with all that being said, is that everything I want to say? Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you to Skillshare for being so fantastic and sponsoring this episode of the podcast. And with all that being said, I will see you very soon in Monday's video. Bye.